The landscape of connecting enterprise users, devices, and applications has seen dramatic changes over a short time. Expectations for secure connectivity with great user experiences are as high as they have ever been. Nowhere are the operational challenges resulting from this change felt more acutely than at the far edges of the network, at the remote offices, branch sites, and enterprise campuses. At Juniper Networks, we have led the way in applying innovative modern technology solutions to these challenges. With wired and wireless access powered by MIST, and we are excited to introduce the newest piece of the AI-driven enterprise with WAN Assurance powered by Session Smart Routing. This is what the branch of the future looks like. It is cloud-managed, AI-driven, and smart about user experience. So let's walk through several days in the life of this modern branch and see what it is like to design, deploy, and operate a full-stack network with MIST AI. We begin in the MIST dashboard, where we have our sites configured for the enterprise organization called ACME. We have sites in Westford and Sunnyvale, which are our data center hub sites. Cupertino is ACME's brand new site that we need to bring online. In the organization-wide settings, we have configuration for our WAN. Starting with networks, this is where we describe who our user populations are and the segments that will be used to connect them throughout the WAN. I've created a network tenant segment called Trusted to describe our corporate users. Next, we move to Services, and we describe the networks and applications that our users will use the WAN to connect to. Services describe the destinations on the network that will be given discrete policy for routing, access, and security. Starting simple, we have two basic services we want our WAN to deliver. One is Internet, which is described by a single quad zero address prefix, matching all IPv4 address spaces. The other is Microsoft Teams, which is described by one of the many predefined applications that the WAN identifies automatically. For services describing applications, users can pick from a huge variety of apps known by our Session Smart WAN by default. We can also use categories of applications or define our own identifiers to create services for custom applications. Now that we have a few named services that the WAN will deliver, and we have a network tenant describing who will be accessing the services, we need to describe how the WAN will be connecting them. This starts with topology. For the Acme Cupertino site, we have MPLS and broadband for connectivity. We need to define each of these as overlays and give path names to each of our Westford and Sunnyvale hub sites. Moving on to our WAN Edge templates, we have some of the local configuration that will be applied at the sites. Looking to our Sunnyvale WAN Edge, we will manage the local device configuration using templates, since this will be the first of many sites for Acme. Templates will help our Cupertino branch and all future sites deploy with consistency. Here you can see that our Sunnyvale and Westford templates will inform those sites they will operate as hubs in the relevant overlays. And we can see that our new Cupertino branch is going to be a spoke to both. On the LAN, connected to the wired and wireless access devices, we have our trusted network segment. For defining how the site will use the available connectivity, we have path preferences. For Cupertino and future sites using this WAN Edge template, they will use overlay paths starting with the MPLS path to Sunnyvale as primary, followed by the broadband path to Sunnyvale, and finally the MPLS and broadband paths to Westford. So at this point we have who our user populations are, what services the WAN is going to deliver, and a strategy on how the connectivity is to be used. A service policy is where we tie all these things together, oriented around the service. Here, we declare that our trusted users are allowed access to the Internet service using the path selection policy we have identified. That is, MPLS first, broadband second. And that's it. Our basic design of the WAN connecting our new Cupertino branch is complete. The wired and wireless access is similarly defined and all we must do next is unbox our devices and connect them. Today is the big day. 
our wired, wireless, and WAN devices have arrived, and today our new branch site goes live. Here we have our new SSR branch device with a MIST claim code on it. This is consistent with the claim code found on our MIST access point and Juniper EX switch, also fresh out of the box. As we look at our wired and wireless device inventory, we have the switch and AP already claimed. Because the devices have never been turned on, they are still disconnected. Let's go ahead and now claim our WAN Edge device by entering the claim code. We indicate that we want to associate the device with our Cupertino site and initiate the claiming process. In this instance, we are claiming the devices one at a time, but this can be done in bulk as we ramp up the pace of deployment. Once claimed, the device is instantly in our inventory, associated with the Cupertino site. Now we just need to plug everything in. Making the physical WAN connections, the yellow cable is the primary MPLS connection, and blue is the secondary broadband. Next, power is applied, and our devices boot up and connect to the cloud. One by one, they learn of their function, topology, and configuration, and transition into service. Starting with the WAN edge, providing connectivity for the switch, providing connectivity for the AP, and last, we see from a user device that our Acme Corp SSID begins broadcasting. We connect to it and get secure connectivity for the user. As a trusted network tenant, we can ping destinations associated with our internet service and open a browser to access the web. Heading back to our MIST dashboard, we can now see that all branch wired, wireless, and WAN devices at our site are now connected. Our WAN Edge Insights shows us that telemetry is already arriving from the SSR WAN Edge device. The device has securely learned its place in the topology and is monitoring the paths in the MPLS and broadband overlays. More than just the WAN, this is a complete branch ZTP experience, including wired, wireless, and now WAN. It is how thousands of sites can be rolled out in a frictionless and reliable deployment. Before we leave the site, Let's show that our Session Smart WAN is able to proactively respond to failures to preserve user experience. Let's invite a colleague to a Teams call. Our collaboration session gets underway, and we have high-quality connectivity through the wireless, wired, and WAN networks. With the call established over the primary MPLS path, let's break the link and see what happens. With AI-driven SD-WAN, the real-time session is seamlessly failed over to the secondary broadband path with minimal disruption to the application experience. Our site is now live, with our user experience enhanced by a tunnel-free WAN that minimizes faults and maximizes uptime thanks to session smart routing. Okay, our Cupertino branch site is deployed. Let's fast forward a bit and look at some of the WAN insights being observed by MIST. Our insights page gives us a view into WAN performance for the site. We have a historical view of WAN-related events and applications that are being used at the site are available for review. Also visible is a list of active client devices that are utilizing the WAN for connectivity to services. These provide a comprehensive view of user activity at the Cupertino location. Further down, key WAN Edge device performance data is plotted in a set of charts. We see system resource utilization, including CPU, forwarding core, and memory. Near the bottom, we see WAN performance for the network paths connecting this WAN Edge to its peers. This gives a historical look at path behavior, including loss, latency, jitter, and MOS score. Being able to see all this WAN-related data with your own eyes is great. But in addition to wired and wireless telemetry, Marvis, our AI-powered virtual network assistant, now sees WAN data as well. 
Starting with an organization-wide view, we see a top-level representation of our user experiences in the WAN. As our organization continues to roll out to thousands of sites, this lets us quickly identify problem sites where WAN experience is being affected. Here, the WAN telemetry from Session Smart Routers is processed to produce SLEs, which stands for Service Level Experience. Looking at our recently deployed Cupertino site, we can see that it is not meeting service levels. Clicking into the site, we get a closer look at the SLEs. They are broken down into three important health categories that play a role in user experience, the WAN Edge device health, the health of WAN links and paths, and the health of applications themselves. Each SLE is broken down into a simple unit of measure for the user experience, called a user minute. Simply put, this is telling us what our user experiences on the WAN are per user per minute. Behind these seemingly simple measurements are the complex and powerful AI models of the MIST cloud, fed by rich telemetry from the Session Smart network. For each SLE, we get a breakdown of the root cause of the issues identified. Whenever user experience is poor in the WAN, MIST not only tells us the root cause, but also tells us what was affected, such as the impacted applications, users, links, paths, and devices. Let's take a look at a separate example of SLEs in another recent real deployment. Here at this site, we see that our user experiences have not been affected by things happening within the WAN Edge device itself or by issues on WAN links. But even still, MIST has noticed that some application experiences are being impacted. What could be going on? Let's hop into our Application Health SLE to see. Each SLE contains a set of classifiers that breaks down the root cause of poor experiences. In this case, 98% of the times that user experience has been poor, the cause has been actual application server responsiveness issues. Going further into subclassifiers, we can see that apps have been slow to respond, even while all the rest of the WAN has been performing perfectly. Looking at items affected by this issue, it shows us which users and applications have been impacted. So, MIST told us that the network is fine, but there are issues out on the internet that are causing the poor experience? Let's check the news to see if there have been any public reports of these issues. Sure enough, this very same day, there was an Amazon server outage. Applications reported as impacted are the same ones that MIST told us about. This is WAN Assurance in action, helping us find impactful issues wherever they are from client to cloud. So what else can Marvis do for us? Meet Marvis Actions, the proactive side of Marvis. Marvis identifies actions that users can take to improve their user experience. If there is action that can be taken to improve the network, it will be brought to the forefront here. For our WAN, we see that Marvis has identified a persisting LTE signal quality issue. From here, we can drill into the details of the issue and get a better sense of the impacts. Looks like I should take some action and have the antenna adjusted. This is a great example of Marvis helpfully suggesting actions we can take to make the user experience better. Now, Marvis isn't just in the background, working on SLEs and looking to suggest helpful actions. Marvis is also ever-present in the forefront of the MIST experience. You can ask Marvis questions about the network at any time. You can ask it to help you do things like troubleshoot a device or access documentation. At our Cupertino site, we know Teams is an important collaboration application. A particular user at the site has noticed periodic issues with poor Teams calls. Let's ask Marvis to help us out. Marvis quickly responds with a handful of Teams sessions that it determined were calls from our user yesterday. Great, let's ask Marvis to troubleshoot one of them. Marvis returns the end-to-end -end path of the session from client to cloud app server. We can see that Marvis points out the WAN as a source of issues that impacted the experience. Going one step further, it shows us the WAN edges that the session traversed, and it pinpoints high network jitter between the edge devices that impacted the experience. Think about that for a moment. A simple question. Why was my Teams call bad? 
a question that would historically need to be answered by top technical operators across different disciplines of expertise, going device to device, pouring through logs and packet captures, mountains of monitoring information just to answer where the session went and where it went wrong. A simple question, simply answered by asking Marvis. Now that Marvis has pinpointed the issue, let's go look at our SLEs for the WAN at the site. Going to yesterday, we see clear indication of user minutes impacted by WAN link health. As we look at the classifiers and subclassifiers of the issue root cause, we see the jitter Marvis told us about. In the affected items, we see that all paths of connectivity for the site experience jitter, which indicates a regional connectivity issue affecting both WAN types in the area. It also explains how, even with the capabilities of session smart routing deployed to maximize experience, no decent forms of connectivity were available, and the impacts of the event were felt by our user. This is AI-driven SD-WAN in action. In this demo, we saw how our Day Zero site design was created using powerful templates for WAN, which can be flawlessly repeated at thousands of sites. Next, on day one, we brought our site live with frictionless deployment. From freshly unboxed devices to secured wired, wireless, and WAN connectivity. Finally, throughout day two operations, we saw how user experiences in the WAN are assured to be the absolute best they can be. And when they could not, Marvis was able to help us quickly find the cause and give us actionable insights to help us improve it. This is just a taste of how Juniper's AI-driven SD-WAN provides exceptional experiences for end users and simplifies operations for IT administrators.